within six months with no drugs whatsoever just on the plan that we will discuss later on how you can get well from virtually every disease. I interview her on this tape, You Can't Improve on God, and you will see that at the beginning she wasn't too happy about changing her diet and lifestyle. But not only did she get well from polymyalgia rheumatica, when she was terribly sick she was unable to even dress herself and she had severe pain. But her triglycerides, which is a measure of the fat in your blood, dropped 400 points in four months. Her cholesterol dropped from 280 to 120. So we go back to the very same thing and see that these autoimmune diseases are really caused from malnutrition, dehydration, and stress. We will also see that sugar suppresses the immune system and can cause joint pain. Water, uh, the lack of water, dehydration from caffeine and alcohol can also cause joint pain. Fluoride decreases the um, immune system's ability to keep you free from disease. Silicone implants seem to be associated with autoimmune disease and immune suppression. Arthritis has been shown in medical literature to be caused from a diet low in nutrients. Alcohol, aspirin, and saturated fats, which are found in meat and dairy products, produce prostaglandin E2, which suppresses the immune system. Carbonated drinks are high in phosphates, which change the mineral balance of the body. And a lack of exercise also can cause you to have stiffness in your joints and not get enough oxygen to your entire body. It's not a mystery why people get sick. It's the same thing with autoimmune disease as it is with cancer and heart disease. We give these diseases to ourselves. Drugs never cure disease. They only change the former location of the disease by causing side effects. These are diseases of the neurological system. Parkinson's, of course, you can develop what we call a pill rolling tremble, tremor and have a shuffling gait and actually sort of turn to stone and eventually it affects the brain. Huntington's disease, Huntington's disease is very similar to that. Amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, also called Lou Gehrig's disease, where you have involvement of your nervous system starting at the lower portion of your body and eventually it gets up to your lungs and your throat and you can choke to death. And it's considered to be 100% fatal. Multiple sclerosis is a disease of the muscles. But just think about this. All of these diseases have these strange names. Multiple just means many and sclerosis means hard parts. It's just got many hard parts in the muscle. It doesn't really tell you what causes the disease. Alzheimer's is of course dementia, but it's just named after the person that first described this kind of dementia. And again, these uh, titles only are Latin terms for describing the symptoms. They don't tell you what causes the disease. And then seizures are also a part of these neurological abnormalities. Well, how do they treat these? Prednisone is one of the main things they use to treat, and we've just We've just gone through the side effects of prednisone or cortisone. They're very destructive. With Huntington's, they use phenothiazines, uh, which all have side effects. With Parkinson's, they use uh, certain drugs that have side effects of restlessness, confusion, depression, edema, nausea, constipation, anorexia. Uh, these are things that are very destructive to a Parkinson's patient, you see. They already have a serious problem, and now they have confusion and possibly hallucinations from their drugs. Some of the drugs, the anticholinergic drugs they put them on, cause nausea, constipation, palpitations. And you see, all of these diseases are made worse by a person not being able to eliminate their weight. So anytime they're taking drugs, that cause uh, constipation, you're going to be worse off. Levodopa, which is used in Parkinson's patients, causes nausea, vomiting, hypotension, cardiac arrhythmias, confusion, uh, tremor and tics and restlessness. And of course, 
amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. There's a drug that's used uh, to treat that where one of the adverse reactions is attempted suicide. It can also cause massive infection, ulcers in the gastrointestinal tract, bleeding in the gastrointestinal tract, hallucinations, delusions, stupor, delirium, psychosis, lung cancer, heart attack, congestive heart failure. The list goes on and on. And then when we get down to seizures, Dilantin is one of the main drugs of choice for seizures. Now again, I'm telling you, when you're on these drugs, don't stop them abruptly. Because if you stop something like Dilantin uh, rapidly and abruptly, you can go into a constant seizure, which is called status epilepticus. But the side effects of Dilantin are lymphoma, which is cancer, Hodgkin's disease, which is cancer, slurred speech, ataxia, which is an unstable gait, mental confusion, decreased coordination, dizziness, insomnia, motor twitchings, headache, uh, in other kinds of things called dyskinesias, where suddenly your arms and hands do strange things and you can't control them, liver damage, nausea and vomiting, constipation, hepatitis, and blood formation suppression. In other words, your bone marrow is suppressed. You can see that these drugs do not cure these diseases. In fact, they make them worse. You have a short-term gain because some of your symptoms are decreased for a long-term disaster. What causes these diseases? Well, Parkinson's uh, is contributed strongly by these excitotoxins. Remember I talked about them. They are the MSG and the um, NutraSweet or aspartame. Also, dehydration makes Parkinson's much worse. And there is some suggestion that the use of caffeine can actually uh, contribute to Parkinson's because it upsets the nervous system. Amyotrophic lateral sclerosis has been shown by medical studies to have an association with, yes, milk, cow's milk. Also, the excitotoxins make this much worse, dehydration, and possibly also caffeine and sugar because they unbalance the nervous system so much. Multiple sclerosis has had tremendous improvement with drinking huge amounts of water and eliminating dairy products. Alzheimer's disease seems to be contributed largely uh, by excitotoxins, again, MSG and aspartame, NutraSweet. Uh, dehydration is associated with Alzheimer's and with brain atrophy. You see, the brain is 85% water, and it weighs about 3.5 pounds in an adult. If you squeeze all the water out of it, it only weighs 10 ounces. There's an article in the medical literature where they talk about they can't figure out why this person has brain atrophy. And when they are on high blood pressure drugs, actually the brain atrophy does not get better. They've associated brain atrophy with people who have high blood pressure. Well, it's because they put people with high blood pressure on diuretics. Diuretics takes water out of your body. You need to have water in your body in order to decrease your hypertension because when you have hypertension, it's because your body knows it doesn't have enough water and it produces a chemical that will actually constrict your arteries to make sure that you have enough blood to go around and fill all of your vascular channels. Because when you don't have enough water, you don't make enough serum to have enough blood volume. So when you get high blood pressure, you've got thicker blood that's being pushed through narrower channels because your body has produced certain chemicals like histamine, uh, vasopressin, and uh, renin angiotensin. These constrict the arteries. So your blood has to pump thicker blood through narrower arteries. If you have high blood pressure, what you want to do is drink more water. If you have Alzheimer's disease, what you want to do is drink more water, and that's a 